All right, uh, let's look at um, this end game. Um, Lasker with the white pieces versus Capablanca. This was played in New York in 1915, and there's a few little paradoxical ideas here that um, I enjoyed. So, Capablanca to move with black. If you want to pause and think about some long-term plans or strategies, try to think about what you might play. So, important to notice here, um, black has a four to three majority on the king side, while white has a two to one majority on the queen side. And um, the first few moves um, demonstrate the importance of this. So Capablanca plays e5, just mobilizing his majority. Then um, this move also will serve to keep the king off from e5 in some lines. Uh, g4 is played, uh, f6, h4, g6. Okay, and so now black has managed to mobilize this 4 to 3 majority. And here white um, needs to find a move. Uh, it might be tempting to push the A pawn down the board, but that would be a mistake. Um, if this pawn comes forward, it will be a target for black's king to attack. And back on a2, it's um, serving as a defensive resource against a possible passed B pawn. And so the question is, well, where should white go with the king? If king c3, which would be a very logical move, preventing black from making any forward progress with their king, um, there are several good options now for black. They all have to do with mobilizing this majority. Um, for instance, f5 now is a very strong move. If g5, then e4, and fx e4, fx e4, and now there's a little bit of a waiting game. White could waste a turn, but black could do the same. And after a4, now the e pawn can decoy white's king away. And after kx e2, kx e4, the proximity of black's king to this pawn um, gives black the winning endgame here. This pawn will fall, and um, this pawn will either queen or be a decoy so the king can run over and grab the other pawns. <clears throat> and that's why back here in this position, king c3 um, was not chosen by Lasker, but instead king e4. Um, a really nice move. Abandoning the defense of the C pawn. Um, this, this move is met with another beautiful move. King D6. Uh, incredibly, Capablanca does not take the pawn on C4. Um, it leads to a lot of uh, deep variations where, in some cases, both sides are queening, but... Um, they all lead to draws. For instance, let's look at a few. If king takes c4, and now let's say black responds with, for instance, a, I'm sorry, white responds with h5. Now, king b4 is a very strong move. The idea is simply to round up the a pawn and race the b pawn down the board. And now if h6, king a3, f, uh, sorry, g5, fx g5, kxc5, the a pawn falls. White's king can try to infiltrate these pawns and attack them. Um, and here, both sides queening is, um, is going to be equality. So, another possibility after, let's say, king takes c4 might be instead of h5 there, another option at white's disposable would be g5. Here, black can take. And after pawn takes, once again, king b4 is a strong move. The idea is very similar to the previous lines. Black will round up this pawn, queen the b pawn, 
White's king will infiltrate on the king's side. Um, sample line might go king takes e5, um, king a3, the a pawn falls, black's king side uh, pawns fall. And now here there's a nice wrinkle. Um, it's white's turn to move, and white can make a draw. What, what would be your move for white? So a very natural move would be to capture the pawn on g6, since it's preventing the f-pawn from advancing, and then trying to race the f-pawn. But it's a little too slow. After king takes g6, um, b3, we could step out of the way of our g-pawn or try to race our f-pawn. It doesn't really matter which we try, um, because black is queening way too fast. And this is this is winning for black. If instead we tried to, um, sorry, back here in this position, race our f pawn, a very similar outcome. Black just simply queens way too fast. And yet there is a move here after b4 that draws for white. It's f4. Um, and now. Even if black races forward, um, here pawn takes doesn't really change the result. Again, an interesting moment. If pawn takes pawn, which might be tempting, black queens, which pins this pawn, and with a, a knight's pawn here, this is a winning endgame. So the correct move for white in this position is to advance the pawn to f6. And now, when black queens, advancing the pawn once more to f7. And this position is drawn. There is a very well-known stalemate trap. Um, just one example might be something like, if king b7, white is not obligated to take this pawn, although taking this pawn would be fine. I could play something like, for instance, just king h8, threatening to queen. Because if queen takes f7, we have a stalemate. Okay, and so those are some of the deep lines that explain why, after this move king e4, which um, certainly gets an exclamation mark because it just gives away the c-pawn, Capablinka did not take the c-pawn, but instead played king d6. Okay, here there are um, a few different directions that the game could take, but um, Lasker played f4. It may have been more prudent to play king d3, but simply f5 and this majority is rolling. Black will maintain a, a nice uh, advantage. And so the move f4 is understandable. Looking to exchange off some pawns and try to halt the advance of the 4 to 3 majority. After takes takes, now king c5 is a very strong move. Um, Lasker advances h5, but Black can simply ignore what's happening on the king side now and focus on the queen side. And now the position is winning for black. Uh, I really liked this, um, this end game because both sides made a few paradoxical moves. And um, some of the deeper lines that all led to draws were fascinating as well. Um, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, this particular end game as much as I did.